Hey guys, Jay Prada Performance here. Okay, uh, this is something that I hear from time to time, and customer sent this in to me, and I want to stress up front, this is not my converter. This did not come out of this shop, so uh, please remember that. Uh, I'm not going to say where it came from, but if I was to say where it came from, uh, one of the biggest places in the world that sells converters, and I know you've heard of them. And this is uh, off the shelf piece. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember if you said it was supposed to be like a super low stall or kind of a high stall. I don't really know, but. Anyways, the reason this is here is because the customer said that this converter vibrated very badly, very noticeably at low RPM, like, uh, you know, 1,000 RPM or so, just off idle. Which, you know, typically I have a hard time believing, uh, to be honest with you. So, I'm not saying it's impossible, but... Usually something that vibrates that badly, especially on a Ford, it's the flex plate's the wrong balance or something, especially with stroke and motors and things nowadays. You know, usually when I sell somebody a converter and they say, hey man, this thing is, you know, vibrating like crazy just at idle, I know it's probably the wrong balance. Now, the customer, you know, stated to me that they went and bought another converter, I don't know where, uh, not from us, but bought another converter, did nothing, put it in, and the problem's gone. So we're going to just assume in this case, okay, it's not going to be uh, the wrong balance on the flex plate or something. Now, typically, you know, people think, well, it's out of balance. It wasn't balanced or it wasn't balanced correctly. Yeah, I can, but you got to be off quite a bit before it's noticeable. In my experience, usually the vibration when, you know, we're talking severe vibration at low RPM. We're not talking a little bit of vibration at, you know, 7,000 RPM or something. This is severe vibration at a very low speed. So a little bit different than... You know, saying, yeah, I can notice it when it, you know, I can notice a little vibration when I get up there in the RPM. That, okay, yeah, that could be balanced. Now, this could be balanced, too. Uh, full disclosure, I have not looked at this at all yet. Uh, I got it in, I unboxed it, and I've just stuck it up here on uh, my balancer here. So, this is our converter balancer. And this is kind of typical of what most shops have. There's things I don't like about this balancer, I'll be honest with you, but it works for the most part. Uh, I think it served us well for its purpose. So anyways, typically what I find with something like this, and I'm just going to make a guess, I don't know yet. Again, full disclosure, all I've done is take it out of the box and stick it up here. And I thought this would be fun, we'll look at this together. Uh, a customer asked me to do this. So I'm going to take a few minutes here and do it. So, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. So what I want to say is typically when I hear of a balance problem this severe, it could be, you know, if it's not the flex plate being the wrong balance, a lot of times it may not be fitting on the flex plate correctly. Or it could be the wrong flex plate. Like in this situation, this being this is a C6 converter, by the way, and it's just a stock cover, uh, nothing special, no, you know, nothing aftermarket on the outside here. So I, you know, I don't expect any kind of weird, like you know, it's not a fabricated cover where it may not fit on the flex plate correctly or anything like that. This is OEM stuff, should fit. So that's pretty simple there. But usually there's something not fitting. Now, if they have, say, a C6, I'm sorry, a C4 flex plate, 
or AOD of Farah 70W, that flex plate sits closer to the block by about a quarter of an inch. So sometimes what I've seen happen is people will have that flex plate, and so what happens is when they tighten up the bolts for the, uh, you know, for the flex plate to converter bolts, the flex plate will crown and be distorted going in. Uh, and on something like this, where it just has the studs, if you're a quarter inch different, you're probably going to have trouble getting the nuts on. So it, it may not be that. He may have the correct plate. Um, again, he says he bought a converter somewhere else, did nothing other than put it in, issue is gone. So we're going to assume he's correct. And the problem is actually this converter. So, But I just wanted to kind of go over some other things I normally see. Uh, so that's a big problem when the balance is off that much. The other problem I typically will see is the run out of the converter will be really bad causing this vibration and very rarely do I fix a problem like this by just putting some weights on it you know it's usually something of misalignment of some sort is usually what causes it to be that bad of a vibration so if you look at this one here uh, we've got two 24 gram weights with a lot of kind of big blobby welds so we got almost 50 grams of weight that's been added to this converter uh, which and let me just double check yeah I don't, there's no other weights than just this 50 grams that's put here 50 grams is a lot you typically don't have to put that much on it unless it's either got a lot of welding done to it internally or something or the runout's really bad the components are just not aligned properly so like in production converters I believe that they only check every so many so occasionally on a production converter something will fall through the cracks where the runout's pretty bad and nobody checked it you know here I'm only building I only build probably two converters a week on average so I check the run out on every one so it, you know a little bit different here it takes me a lot longer I'm, I'm just not I'm specialty I'm not productions obviously at average of two a week so so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna put you on hold here for a minute I'm gonna set this up to run now this has had oil in it but it does have a drain plug and it appears to be drained out pretty thoroughly but any residual oil that's still in the converter will really throw this balancer off uh, so I'm trying to be very fair about checking this I other converter builders I've seen them they're not very fair about the way they test things they kinda wanna make themselves look really good and precise but uh, I'm not really interested in that. I'm just interested in finding the problem here and uh, just doing this for the customer and seeing what we find. You know, I thought it would be an interesting video because this is a question, uh, whether it's been my converter or somebody else's, people said, hey, man, I think it's vibrating on me. Uh, what's up? I want you to balance this. It's like, man, it was balanced. And, you know, when it left here, it's balanced and... I make sure it's straight and all that, so typically when I hear it, I don't take it very seriously, but this is an unknown product, so I'm going to, you know, go through all the paces here, and I'll do it with you. So let me put you on hold. I'm going to get this set up to run. Another thing I'm going to do, and I won't waste your time with this, I'm probably going to spin this on the balancer for quite a while because there's a little bit of residual oil in it. I'm trying to get the oil to evenly disperse so that we can get a more accurate balance reading on it. Uh, again, I want to I don't want to go look how far off it is. I, mine are way better. No, it's not what I'm here to do. I'm going to check this fairly. Uh, I'm just, you know, going to troubleshoot this unprejudiced. So, let me put you on hold. I'm going to set it up to run. I'm going to probably run it for a good five minutes or so and then I will be back 
and then we'll we'll run it together and I'll show you what we find there and and we'll continue on from there so give me one second I'm sorry uh, before I run this I wanted to point something out now I believe the customer told me this was not run very long at all so I don't know if you can see it I can feel it um, so when I look at this hub where it rides in the pump of the transmission and I can even feel it's got a ridge on one side it's already wearing very uneven which doesn't normally concern me a whole lot but where this has not been in the vehicle very long I'm just gonna go ahead and say the problem with this is probably gonna be run out uh, so I just wanted to mention that uh, so again I'm sorry give me one second and we're gonna balance this okay guys I'm back all right just as I suspected. Man, when I turned this balancer on, I was scared. I thought this thing was going to hit me. Okay, watch this. Uh, like I said, uh, yeah, we're showing, we're showing about 26 grams out, which, you know, is definitely not good, but probably wouldn't vibrate a lot at 1,000 RPM, I don't think, but certainly you know certainly not good so you never want it to be off that much but uh, again I'm not even worried about that right now I want you to see this so let me see if I can get this angle where you can see it I don't think the camera's really doing this justice but let's try it at a different angle I mean you can see this thing wobbling around I mean, the way you have it sitting here, it, it may not be, you know, they never look super perfect, but this is, I don't know if you can tell, but this is, this is way off. Uh, here we go. I th think that angle showed it a little better. So, that runout's terrible, and we could see that evidence on the hub. Uh, cause again, you know, it's not unusual to see some hub wear, but that's a lot of hub wear in, you know, almost no time. I mean, the customer said he didn't run this very much. It was just vibrating too bad. He didn't want to drive the car around like this. And good thing it would screw up his pump. So, I think we've seen what we need to see here. I'm going to put this on the lathe and we're actually going to look at the run out a little bit better. So let's do that. I'm going to put you on hold again, and we will go the next step. Okay, guys, I'm back. All right, so here's what I got going on here. On my lathe here, um, now I use this lathe to weld converters together. I don't actually do it like this. I normally don't have this chuck here. I've got plates made that fit. They fit the covers so that this bolts to the plate and then this chuck here on the tailstock is set to be in line with the center line of the plate. Um, now these three jaw chucks, uh, this is not a real high dollar one um, on here, but uh, this is a pretty high dollar one, but this one here is not a super high dollar one, so my point is it's not super duper accurate, but I would say we're in line here about probably three thousandths or so, which is pretty damn good. I mean, if you don't know what three thousandths is, it's about a, it's about the thickness of the hair on your head. Uh, unless you're a redhead, that might be about four thousandths. Uh, if you're blonde, that might only be about two thousandths. Um, it just depends on your hair color and that sort of thing. So, uh, just some weird information for you there. Yeah, I... I know some weird things, but I was a machinist for a long time. Yeah, you'll learn some. You'll learn some crazy stuff. So, anyways, um, and I won't tell you what an RCH is because it's a family show. So, unfortunately, I can't tell you about that. But so, what I'm going to do here now? You notice here I mocked this. So, what I'm simulating here, I actually put a bushing, a pump bushing here. 
And that's that way so my jaws are held exactly in the spot on the hub that it would be held uh, if it was actually in the transmission and in the car. So we're held there and then we're held here on the pilot. So we're simulating this being installed. And my indicator here is measuring off the pads where this sits on the flex plate. So we're kind of acting like the flex plate, I guess, if you will. So, okay, let me, I move something here. So I'm gonna set this. This, the runout is so far off on this that, well, we're not checking runout technically. This, what we're looking at here is what the flex plate does is the flex plate's job is to make up for misalignment, okay? So you have a welded assembly here. It's never perfectly in line. When you weld these two pieces together, they distort. They don't, st even if your machine is dead on, they don't stay perfect, okay? That's just reality. Uh, some other, some converter shops may tell you, oh, ours come out perfect every time. Yeah, whatever. I mean, ours come out pretty good, but I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's perfect. But certainly within reasonable specifications where you don't have vibration issues and uh, excessively worn pump bushings and hubs and things, so... Everything has to be, you know, brought into reality. It's not a perfect world we live in. So let's leave the sales pitches out of this. So, okay, I'm on this pad, and I've got the indicator set to zero. Now, the problem is, this is so far off, I can't measure it with just the indicator. So I have to actually measure this distance with the... Um, compound here and the compound moves so I've got that set to zero so I, I just took a second and did this beforehand I haven't measured it yet but I could see it was a mile off so I just found the one that was closest this direct this direction and then we're gonna see how far off it is so that one's at zero so now watch this we're gonna come up to this one and you can see that the dial's not even close to touching. So I'm gonna dial in, and what I do is dial in with the compound until our indicator, oh my God, I'm still moving here, it's back to zero. So the movement here is about 46 thousandths. And what are we looking for, what's reasonable? Man, I like to see it within 10. And we're at 46 on that first one. So let me, I'm going to back off. Because I don't want to hit anything. Okay, I'm going to come to this one. Which I suspect this is the stud 180 degrees from the one we marked. So I'm going to, I'm figuring this is going to be the worst one. So let's dial in. And see what we got. Alrighty. And what do we got? 62, 63,000. So that's a sixteenth of an inch right there. It's too much. When you ask the flex plate to flex that much, it's going to crack more than likely. And that's not a good scenario. And I still kind of challenge, I can see that they balance this, but based on me putting it on my balancer and looking at it and seeing that 26 grams, I don't even think it was balanced correctly. It should be closer than that. Uh, so between the run out and the balance, this is pretty terrible. Uh, so let's check the last stud just for the hell of it. Might as well while we're here, got nothing to lose. Let's just see if I was right about the one 180 degrees being the most, being the furthest off. So here's the next stud. Oops, overshot. And this one is uh, only 11 thou different. 
So if all of these were, you know, say 11 thou or less, I don't think it would be a problem. Uh, so for the hell of it, I'm gonna... I mean, th this is this run out is unacceptable. So I'm gonna say that. Uh, the balance, I don't think was done properly. Because 26 grams... You know, if you take this off of your balancer and you bring it, drive it over to another shop, put it on their balancer, it's never going to look exactly the same. Okay? I'm going to say that right off. And just like if I weld this up here and I check the run out after I weld it and say my run out is two thousands, if I just go and chuck this up on somebody else's machine, it's going to look worse than two thousands, more than likely. Hard to explain, but it's just the way it is when you're... I mean, you know, you're measuring tolerances that are the thickness of the hair on your head, okay? So, you know, you get a lot of little variations, but you shouldn't be getting... You know, this is obviously too far off, okay? And again, I said I was going to be fair about this. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh my God, mine are, you know, within a thousandths and this is off... 63,000s. No, you know, mine not going to be that good either, but it's going to be way better than 62. I mean, like I said, there'll be 10 or less, you know, hopefully 5 or less a lot of times, you know, checking it like this. So I'm going to uh, put you on pause again, and we're going to just chuck this up another way so you can kind of, we'll really exaggerate what this looks like, uh, how far off it is, and we'll We'll do that just for fun. We'll kind of do it the way another converter shop would do it, kind of in an unfair basis. But uh, So bear with me. Let me set up for that. Be right back. Okay, guys. Now, again, this isn't the most fair way to do this, but what I've done is grab this in the chuck. And, again, it's a three-jaw chuck. These are never perfect. Uh, especially this one. This this is not a. This chuck is kind of used and abused, so it's not. It's not bad, but it's not perfect. You know, I, I know that about it. Uh, you know, when you run a machine every day, you you know all its idiosyncrasies. So I'm gonna try to take a measurement on here, but the the problem is, and you can see this indicator. Let me try to look. It's touching. No, it's really not. I don't have enough travel on this particular indicator to measure this run out. Uh, this indicator is a 30 thousandths travel. Well, actually, it's 35, technically. So we're coming up here to the full travel, and it's dropping down. So whatever this run out is, I, I could uh, I could check it with the compound, but I'm not going to bother. It's more than thirty-five thousandths on the run out here, and again, this isn't the most fair way to check it like this, but the way I just showed you is the most fair way to check it because it's actually how the you know how it's installed and. Uh, you know, the the vision of the uh, flex plate, you know, that's the most fair way to do it. And I would say with that, you know, the pads you want within 10, that would be ideal. You know, 10 or less, no more than 10, really. So anyways, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say this converter, the reason it's vibrating, number one, because of run out. And yeah, number two, it it, it does need to be rebalanced, but... I think with the balance the way it was, probably wouldn't have been real noticeable at, you know, low RPM, but high RPM it may be, you know, being 26 or whatever it was off on the on grams. But this here, this run out's terrible, so I don't exactly know what it is. I could chuck this up another way for you. I could put it on the plate. I guess uh, about 24 minutes into this. I mean, I was trying to do this quick, but let me let me do that. Give me a minute, and I'll I'll chuck it up the other way. Uh, 
so hold on. Okay, guys, I, I hope you understand what I'm doing here. Um, I'm trying to go over this quickly, but... So, this plate is machined onto this, you know, it's it's been machined after it's attached to the machine so that it's nice and, you know, perpendicular, it's on center and all that sort of stuff. This is my welding plate, okay? And the nice thing about a solid plate like this is when you have these uh, stock OEM covers, they're flexible, so you're bolted in on all four so it holds the cover nice and flat when you go to do your welding. Uh, some of these welding machines, what they do is they just hold the pilot and they try to suck it in so that the four pads are touching, but uh, not as solid as this. Uh, so this is just, you know, part of my fixture so you can see how I do it. But, man, I... <laughs> so I'm checking... I mean, it's just I don't have enough travel on this indicator to to tell you how far this is off. It's off at least forty thousandths, I would say. I could actually measure that, but I don't care enough to bother. You know, after twenty, you know, who cares? You know, and I would say, you know, okay, what's acceptable run out? Well, this is controversial, but. We need to talk the difference between GM and Ford for a minute because Ford has four studs. GMs only have three. So if you want my opinion, if it's a GM or anything with just three studs, the runout can be a little bit more off. Okay, a lot of the GM guys say it can be out 20 thousandths and not cause a problem. I don't believe that's true on a Ford. On a Ford with the four studs, I mean, you better be 10 thou or better. Uh, you're going to have problems on a Ford. Uh, that's my experience with it. So, you got to be a lot more precise when it's got four studs. Or, you know, not just Ford, but anything with four studs. Uh, if it's got three studs, uh, you can get away with a little bit more. That's kind of a nice thing about that. But, uh, this is pretty far off. So, what I'm going to do, uh, I guess I need to go buy a new indicator so I can measure this thing, huh? But I'm going to take that off for a minute. And I'm going to turn the lathe on. I mean, you can see this. You, you don't need to get your indicator out. Uh, even a novice can see this. Look at that hub. A lot of wobble to it. See the whole converter there. Let me turn it on a higher speed. Sometimes you can tell a little bit better than turning it slow. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Just look at it from this angle. So. Anyways. Uh... The point of this was not to, I'm not going to mention this company's name, I'm not here to slam anybody, and maybe they just had a bad day on this one, so whatever, I'm not going to get in trouble or try to run down somebody's reputation, so uh, unknown converter and just not good quality, and this most definitely I am with the customer I don't think the customer is crazy I do believe this would definitely cause somebody a problem and this is not the first time I've seen something like this on a production item being this far off so it happens what do you do but anyways I guess I don't know I don't know if he tried to send it back to him and they refused or Maybe he had it too long. I, I just don't know. Or maybe maybe he didn't care and just got another one and didn't even want to be bothered with these guys. I don't really know the situation. It doesn't really matter. But uh, I apologize. I had to go over this pretty quickly. And it's still a half-hour video here just kind of glazing over this. So I hope you understand what I did. And 
I think you see the point. So to answer the big question, can a converter cause a balance issue? Yes, it can. And in summary, my opinion, the runout is a lot more likely to cause this vibration issue than so much the weights that are on it. Yes, it's important to balance them and have the correct weights on it in the right position. I actually have a friend that's been building converters for probably, I don't even know, 30 or more years. He doesn't even own a balancer. And he just works on making everything straight and concentric. And in his mind, if everything's straight and true, he's not going to have a balance issue. And he does a lot of race car stuff, and he does excellent work. And I agree with him. If it's straight, it's not going to be an issue. So, you know, to get a balance of these days with tooling, yeah, it's a $20,000 investment last I knew, probably even more now, who knows. But So it's not cheap to get a balancer. Um, we have one, thankfully, and it's nice to have, and... Uh, just double, triple ensures that I don't have a balance issue. So, in any case, that's that. I hope you learned something from this and it was interesting to you. And I apologize for going over it so quickly and still taking over a half an hour to do it. But uh, we just wanted to show you this. So, okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully we'll see you on another one.